everyone, Dr. Kerry Yazid here, your favorite behavioral scientist and qualitative researcher who loves to snoop around in the comments on social media to find out what's going on in today's society to get a pulse of how people are feeling about certain issues and topics. So today we're going to jump right on in. Yes, honey. Let's talk about these Grammy Awards in particular dr dre so last night dr dre received his own award i don't know how that works but yeah he got an award that's named after him first time this has been done to honor his work and his contributions to the music industry not just hip-hop but the music industry at large now we've got to give the man due respect he's made a lot of contributions yes he has but I want to talk about why I saw a couple of feathers being ruffled on social media and why some people were feeling a certain way about him receiving this award and an award being named after him. So particular case that comes to mind was this hip hop journalist, trailblazer in the industry who went by the stage name of Sister D. Her real name was D. Barnes. D. Barnes, again, was a trailblazer, was reporting on hip hop as it was unfolding. And she was best known for her show on Fox Entertainment, which was called Pump It Up. She was the host from approximately 1989 to 1992. Well, during that time, D. actually had an episode where she featured where she actually took two interviews, an interview with NWA and an interview with Ice Cube, and she put them together. They were both aired at the same time. And following that, there was an interview that was done with Ice Cube where he made some negative remarks towards NWA. Mind you, NWA had also made some negative remarks towards Ice Cube in their album that was released shortly thereafter so the negativity or the tension that was going on between nwa and ice cube was because ice cube was going his separate way he was going out as a solo artist members of nwa felt a certain type of way including dr dre so instead of dr dre taking up his issue with ice cube he confronts Barnes at an industry party on January 27, 1991. So we're talking approximately 32 years ago that this occurred, right? Right. And I know some people are saying, girl, that happened so long ago. It happened. It happened. And we're talking about it. So on January 27, 1991, they're at this industry party and okay dr drake decides to confront borns well in his confrontation he becomes physically aggressive he begins to assault her the assault continues with him trying to throw her down a set of stairs some kind of way borns escapes and she runs into the women's bathroom at this at this club i think it was at a club well she thinks she's safe she's not Dre enters the restroom and the assault continues. The assault consists of him punching her in the head, pulling her by her hair and slinging her into the door several times. It's really brutal, okay? So after that, he escapes the scene, him, members of NWA and his bodyguards. Now you might be wondering, well, Dr. Carey, why didn't anybody come to this woman's rescue? Well, the bodyguards were holding the crowd back with guns. So no one could actually get to her to help her as this assault took place. Barnes filed charges and Dre later pleaded no contest. He was fined $2,500. He had to do 250 hours of community service and he had to do a public service announcement against anti-violence okay so that gives you some context oh god also mentioned this Barnes also sued him for 22.7 
five million dollars which was later settled out of court so we're not really sure how much she won from the settlement or how much she was granted from the settlement but there was an out of court settlement that is not dre's only documented history of dv and putting his hands on women especially women in the industry and other incidents that we know of are with first wife michelle lay so in michelle lay's story which came out a few years ago she actually talks about the abuse that occurred within her relationship and that it didn't stop until she escaped Fast forward to what, a year ago, second wife is now filing for a divorce and she requests a restraining order against Dr. Dre. Now we know that when someone is requesting a restraining order, it is because they feel that their life is in danger. In her case, the restraining order was denied. But again, why does someone request a restraining order? Just keep that in mind so we have at least two cases that we know of two women who have come forward and shared their stories could be a possible three with this last ex-wife and so giving that context and knowing that he has a history of domestic violence which he went on record after the movie about nwa came out and it started to receive some flag because of how it left out or really minimized the contributions of women to their careers um you know and also about the you know physical assaults that had taken place dr dre did release a statement and basically said you know that he was sorry for any woman that he had ever hurt so he wasn't specific and he also went on to say that, you know, if a man puts his hands on a woman, then he's stupid. Not really taking accountability for anything that he has done. And not, he's not saying, yes, I did it or I didn't do it, but that's what we have that's out there. And so in that context, it makes us stop and think about how Bourne's career was basically ended once the incident occurred and she filed charges against him her career came to a screeching halt yes she was ostracized and blackballed in the hip-hop community like we no longer heard from her or about her i just found a sister on twitter a couple of years ago and was ecstatic like oh my god she's still here she has struggled throughout the years um a few years ago she had to turn to gofundme because she was about to be homeless um a few weeks ago she actually was asking for help to help her to get back some of the rights of some of her work so she could because it was being um auctioned off which sometimes happened so she has went through a lot but she was the victim in all of this. Like she wasn't the perpetrator, she was the victim. But it, it makes us stop and think that when victims come forward and we often wonder why they don't come forward, it's because of cases like this, where they're ostracized, they're blackballed, they're not believed, or they are blamed for what happened to them. Again, going back to victim blaming which i talked about in last week's video so we saw that happen with Barnes, but we also saw that happen with the career of michelle lay um and this was even before michelle lay spoke out but you know during her divorce from dre her career just took came to a screeching halt talented artists beautiful vocals Barnes, talented writer, talented journalist. Both of these women, their careers ended before their time and they struggled throughout the years. Meanwhile, the music and entertainment industry uplifted Dr. Dre, promoted him, and we are where we are now. He's being honored by the Grammys for his contributions to the music industry and again these incidents took place in the beginning of his career 
So I just kind of wanted to put into context why you might be seeing the negative comments on social media, why people might be feeling a certain way. If you see some comments that are mentioning D Barnes or Sister D, that is who they are referring to. D Barnes has spoken out several times about different um, instances or things that Dr. Dre has said. Most recently, when he was performing at the Super Bowl, and he made the comment about, you know, there might be some surprises, and he may have to tell, you know, Snoop and Eminem to keep their man parts um, in, inside their pants, something like that. Again, it's all like this misogynistic behavior and how we constantly overlook it and we don't hold these men accountable for their behaviors and what they have done to women in different industries. Also, how when women speak out, when women speak out in the workplace, um, when women are speaking out professionally, which again, if we think about Barnes, This was what she did for a living. She was a hip hop journalist and she was assaulted. She was attacked for information that she put together. Like she's not saying this stuff. NWA is saying some stuff. Ice Cube is saying some stuff. She puts it together and she airs it and she was assaulted, physically assaulted. So she carried that burden for all of these years. And instead, again, of the of the industry promoting her for her contributions to hip hop and for her being a trailblazer in the hip hop industry. Also, Michelle Lay for her contributions to hip hop and for how she was a trailblazer for women in hip hop, how both of them, because of what they went through as victims, Instead of the industry coming together and supporting them and protecting them and protecting their voices and still allowing them to be great and to make contributions to the industry, to, you know, entertainment in general, they were silenced. Their careers were ended. Their platforms were taken away from them. How many times do we see that happen with women right here, right now, in the workplace, who speak out. How many times do we see this happen to like our mothers and our sisters and our daughters who are in these situations and they cry out for help and they're blamed for whatever they are going through, for the harm that they encountered. Somehow it's their fault and it's not society's fault. It's not the perpetrator's fault. And instead, the perpetrator goes on to live a life, a life that might be prosperous, where they're uplifted in their community and they're not shunned. They're also not forced to be held accountable for what they have done. I don't know about you, but $2,500, that's not a whole lot of accountability for a fine. You know, hey, you doing a whole public service announcement on anti-violence? Anti-violence can cover a whole lot of things. I need people to keep in context. Back then, we were talking about gangs that had taken over South Central. We were talking about, you know, just this inner city violence that was taking place. So anti-violence necessarily didn't have to um, equate to physical violence or assault against a woman. Just keeping it real. So as we move forward, I want us to really stop and take a moment to think about how society uplifts perpetrators, how society continues to perpetuate misogynistic behaviors and thoughts, and how we sit back and allow it, and how we allow these perpetrators to be put on pedestals and to be given awards or to have awards named after them. Again, my name is Dr. Kira Yazid. If you have found today's video informative, what are you waiting for? I need you to hit that like button, make sure you subscribe, and most importantly, honey, share this video out with a friend.